Hello again. Today we're looking at a set of uh, Scarlett Audio uh, headphones. Uh, model HP60 Mark II. Uh, I don't know where these rank. I'm not really big on headphones, so as far as quality goes, uh, if they're really up there anywhere. But uh, maybe the fact that there's a, a bit of um, branding with the word studio, maybe they're semi-good quality. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna. Looks like the dog attacked these ones. And there's uh, <laughs> there's where the cable should go, and uh, there's the cable. So kind of annoying to have it chomped off right where it enters uh, through the little uh, strain relief flex there. But maybe we can pull the old one through and mm, keep uh, reuse this. Uh, little strain relief because it does go into a square hole so it looks like square oh might be round anyway we'll uh, see what we can do so how does one get into a set of headphones well probably not from the outside he says as he gingerly attempts to see if it lifts well, it does lift can get an edge to lift there, but uh, it does feel like it's held on. Probably have to go through this side like a lot of headphones do. Uh, can I flip them out of the way? No? Okay. So let's try and just see how well this might want to come up. Oh, okay. So if you get a finger in here and give it a bit of a pull and uh, squeeze with your thumb, it looks like it's going to roll out of the edge there. So it's a, that's good. We can tuck it in later. We'll start with that. There we go. And here we have some screw holes. How about that? Oh, they're even angled. Look at that. Make sure it dives straight into your uh, eardrum there. <laughs> Doesn't have to bounce off the uh, air canal. Phillips screws in this case. And uh, there's, there's no fancy electronics in here. Uh, it's just a plain old headphones. You can see here where the cable comes in and uh, comes through the body of the headphones. There's a metal clamp providing some extra strain relief there by the look of it. And then it's just uh, the blue and, I don't know, blue, gold and red come down and sort of tee in together. Uh, the red are joined and looped through to the other side and the... Uh, Gold and blue go to this speaker. Well, it looks like the golden. Oh, okay, yeah. So red's left. Say red's red's left. Blue's right. And uh, yeah, gold is common. We'll take off that strain relief. And uh, we don't need to take it all the way off. We'll just be able to loosen that. There we go. Swing it down out the way. Uh, now we just have to detach that. See if we can pull that through the... Uh... Oh, we can. It's nice and loose. Excellent. So I thought the little tail here that's um, added support uh, might be moulded to the cable itself because they often do that and yeah, makes it a bit harder to do. So get that out of the way. Right, so all we need to do is attach the blue wire to here, the red wire to the other red wire, and the gold wire to the left side of the board there. And uh, looks like I've put a little bit of hot glue on that red join there, just to keep everything insulated, so it doesn't bounce around and touch one of the others. So we'll just, uh, might as well leave that connection there and we'll just cut off before that. We'll just join onto there and then uh, 
or desolder the other two. I don't think there's any glue on those. Sometimes they glue them as well. But in this case, there's no glue there. We'll feed uh, the cable back through here first. Because if you go ahead and attach it, you'll uh, <laughs> kick yourself. <laughs> and we'll uh, trim off a length similar to what they had. Measure it against there. So they took that much off there. I'll just go a little bit longer. Not that it'll really matter. Probably could go a little bit shorter. And then, uh, I just nip my way around the insulation. It's quite thick insulation, really. The strands at the middle are very fine. There we go. Tin the end of the red wire. Because the insulation on it needs to be melted off. So it's basically just by rubbing a ball of solder against the end of it, load your tip up with solder and just rub it on there until it stays shiny silver. And we have to do the same to our new ends. The hotter the iron, the easier it is. Stick a little bit of flux on there just so it uh, keeps it tidy and uh, it's going to be lead free solder that's on there at the moment. And I'll load the uh, tip up with um, solder because we'll need to make sure that there's a, enough of a blob on here to keep these two together like that. And I suppose I better find something to insulate that with. So here's a little piece of uh, hot glue stick and I'll just uh, use a bit of low air and uh, get that molten and then dab it up onto the uh, wire it's fairly liquidy there and then I'll you might just bring the wire over to it Easy as that. Of course, before we stick it all back together, we need to uh, test that the 
cable is connected through so we've got our uh, negative on the inside connection and then our, in, in our center pin should be one speaker and we've got 35 ohms and the end pin should be the other speaker and we've got 35 ohms give or take so that's connecting through they should work and reassemble in the reverse order so we need to pull through any extra slack that we left ourselves that should be that should be good in fact you can use this as a reference there's a mark there under the clamp so you know you had about what's that a centimeter hanging out after the clamp so we'll do that Tighten that down slightly, see if it'll hold itself, maybe not. Spin that up. Oop, might be a little too tight. But the cable's fatter than the uh, old one, there we go. So that'll squash down. Make sure it's sitting in any cutout that might be in the plastic underneath, which it seems to be. And I'll put the uh, top screw in. Now it's quite short so I'm just going to push down on this plate and get it really close to the hole so that the screw can go in without having to be under a lot of tension. We don't want to strip strip out the plastic thread trying to screw it down so I'll hold it down and do most of the work for it and then the other side and just lightly lightly nip them up. They're only small screws you don't want to crank down hard on them if they have no thread then uh, it will never hold again and you'll just be left with you, know, you tug you tug on the outside and it'll rip off the inside and make sure they aren't going to get pinched when you fold it all back together Let's do some uh, cunning routing it looks all good to me may only go on one way if we've got it the wrong way but, uh, I think that's right mm, no there is a location notch in the plastic so you can't put it in the wrong way around <laughs> there you go all right otherwise yeah it'd be facing the wrong way quite nice that they didn't uh, glue the um, foam surround on or a lot of a lot of uh, units use double-sided tape I mean it, it's just a nuisance more than anything it's not hard to to reuse of course but um, just by letting it hang on to the edge with its own uh, with its own stitching and molding is, is a nicer way of doing it I've got a bit of stretch to them so you have to get like the bulk of it on and, and hold it with one hand while you grab it and, and just uh, stretch and release so that the edge falls back uh, uh, around and, and finds its way into the groove and uh, you work your way around like that and she's all on again. Right now I think the microphone is there but there's one speaker and there's the other speaker. Well, a nice basic one for today, but I uh, hope it was useful. <laughs> Don't let your dog uh, chew your headphones, I guess, is, a, is the moral. But uh, uh, it's not always the end of the world. So um, it's all you need is a solder iron and a screwdriver, and uh, you can get a lot of simple uh, tasks accomplished. Uh, not not everything's a overly complicated uh, solution so hopefully uh, that helps you out and uh, thanks for watching